This is part 8 of Link to XML tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss validating an XML file against an XST file. XST stands for XML Schema Definition Language. First, let's understand what's an XST file. An XST file defines the structure of the XML file, that is, what element should be present in the XML file, in what order should these elements be present, how many times these elements should be present, what attributes should the elements have, and how should these elements be nested. All these rules are defined in the XST file. Without an associated XST file, an XML file is a relatively free set of elements and attributes, meaning if an XML file does not have any XST file associated with it, then such XML file can have any XML elements, those XML elements can have any attributes, and the XML elements can be present in any order. The XST that we have here specifies that within a given XML file, the root element should be named students. And directly underneath that root students element, we should have a student element. Notice that min occurs is set to one, max occurs is set to four, meaning we should have at least one student element directly underneath the root students element. And we should not have more than four such student elements. And each student element should have name, gender, and total marks elements. And these elements should be present in that order. Now let's see how to validate a given XML document against this XST. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Now, here I have a new console application. We need four different namespaces. So first, let's bring them in. We need system.link, system.xml.link, and finally, we need system.xml.schema. First, to this project, let's add a schema file. So right click on the project, add a new item. Make sure data is selected under install templates. Select XML schema. Notice that the schema files have got .xst extension. And let's name this student.xst. Now to get to the XML editor within the schema file, select the second option. Use the XML editor to view and edit the underlying XML schema file. So here we are in the source mode now. To speed things up, I have already typed the required XST. So let's paste that here. So this is the same schema definition that we have seen on the slide. Now, to this project, let's also add an XML file. So add new item, and this time we want to add an XML file. Let's call this data.xml. And this file is going to contain our student XML data. So again, I have this student XML data typed already. I'll have this XST and XML data available on my blog in case you need it. Now what we want to do is validate this XML document against this access day. Okay. Now if you look at the data that we have got here, notice that the root element is students. That's what the XST states. Root element should be named students. And directly underneath students element, we should have student element. You know, maximum of four such student elements sh should be present. So here, Notice that we have four student elements, and each student element has got name, gender, and total marks elements. And that's what the XST states, name, gender, and total marks. So at the moment, this XML confirms to the rules specified by this XST. So within our main method, let's write code to validate the XML document against the XST. So the first thing that we need to do is create an instance of XML schema set. And let's call this schema equals new XML schema set. And now we actually need to read the XML schema from this student.xst file. And this file is present within this project folder. So let's get the path of the folder. And the schema method has, got, I mean, the XML schema set object has got this add method. There are four different overloads. We are going to use this overloaded version. Okay. At the moment, we don't have any namespace, so let's specify that as a uh, an, an empty string. And the second option here is to specify the schema URI. So the schema is present in this file. C colon backslash demo backslash demo backslash student dot xsta. Now we also need to load the XML data from this data dot XML file. So Let's make use of this X document class. Let's call it doc 
equals x document dot load. So we are going to load the XML data from data.xml file also present in the project folder. So let's change the name to data.xml. Okay, so now we have the XML data, we have the XML schema. So how to validate? The X document class has also got validate method. Okay, and notice the parameters that this validate method expects. First, we need to pass the schema. So we have the schema already present in this object. So what is this method going to do? It's going to validate this XML document against this XML schema. Okay, now once it validates and if there are validation errors, then we can specify a function to call. So look at this validation event handler. This is nothing but a delegate. Okay, so let's actually look at that. So validation event handler. So right click on that, go to the definition, notice that it's actually a delegate. What's a delegate? A delegate is a function pointer, meaning now we can pass a function as a parameter to this validate method. Now when the validation fails, that function gets called. Okay, so and if you look at what are the parameters that this delegate has two parameters. One is of type object, the other one is of type validation event args. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is create another variable of type boolean. Let's call it validation errors and we are initializing that to false. Okay, and here the second parameter is the function that we want to call when validation fails. Okay, now there are several ways to specify a function. Now we can create a separate function which confirms to this delegate and then create an instance of this delegate pass that function that we have created as an argument and then pass the delegate instance as an argument you know to the validate method instead of that the shorthand notation is to use a lambda expression so we know that the function that is going to be called is going to receive two arguments one is of type object which is nothing but the sender the other one is of type um, validation event args okay so let's call it E. So now here we are going to define what we want that function to do. So console.writeLine. Now this object right here, this E, it's nothing but validation event arguments object. And this object has got the message property. So if there is a validation error, you know, the message property will be populated. Okay. So we want that message to be printed and then we are going to set this variable to true meaning you know the validation has failed there are validation errors and then what we will do here is we'll check if validation errors console.writeLine validation fail else validation succeeded. All right, so with all these changes, let's go ahead and run our code. Now at the moment, validation should succeed. That's because this XML confirms to the rules of this XSA. So let's run this and it should print this message, validation succeeded. Now let's do this. Let's change the XML that we have got in this data.xml file. Now let's actually remove this gender element and put that before name element. Okay. Now, what does the XST says? XST says name, gender, and total mark element should be present directly underneath the student element in that order. But then, if you look at the XML here for this student element, we have changed the order. Let's see if the validation succeeds. Look at that. The element student has invalid child element gender list of possible elements expected name so it was expecting name element underneath the student element but instead it encountered this gender element okay so if we move that back and we run this 
notice that validation succeeded now let's do one more thing let's actually change the schema let's say we want gender first and then name okay and if you look at the XML here none of the XML elements that is student elements you know confirm to that rule so we should have at least four messages because we have four elements look at that has invalid we have four error messages and it says has invalid child element uh, name list of possible elements expected gender so the first element within the XML underneath student should be gender that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day